Blah, I fucked that up. Let me try that again. Um, <laughs> so let us begin the review of this novelization. And then we're going to bring out the full unedited hour-long on the dot interview with David Morrell himself. Now, um, there's going to be spoilers. Lots of them. Lots of them. Lots and lots of spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, please skip to the interview section of tonight's very special broadcast. You know, that being said, um, I'm going to give spoilers, but it's not um, much in comparison to the book. You know, meaning the novelization goes hundreds of levels deeper, and we're just going to skim, um, we're just going to skim the surface for you. Like a play-by-play -play for you guys, for, for all you lazy people out there, like myself sometimes. Um, but we're not going to let the cat truly out of the bag, uh, so to speak. Meaning, um, even if you listen to all the spoilers, uh, when you read the sequel novelization, it won't matter. Because the book is a world of difference in itself. And a million times better than what we could ever do or disclose or be disclosing uh, right now. So with that, um, let's take a look at David Morrell's sequel novelization for Rambo First Blood Part 2. The f not the fall Rambo 3 will be the follow-up, but this is the sequel to his 1972 debut novel, First Blood. So let us begin. So it would seem that Morel returns us in an alternate 1985 with Rambo swinging that sledgehammer in the rock quarry, very zen-like, and Rambo's there, but definitely he's not. He's daydream meditation, or his daydream meditation at that point, has him back in Vietnam, knee-deep in the blood and guts, you know, all over the place, um, one up on everyone in this prison because you know his newfound religion has freed his mind so in his reality he could be anywhere he wanted to be unlike everyone else you know guards included uh, how to survive anything even pain could be enjoyed or enjoyable if you could tune yourself into it existence is key and, and that's something Rambo will use to his advantage later on in that amazing mattress torture scene. But uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. So right off the bat, Morel has um, recaptured his original character here. You know, we're back to the man we loved to watch him hate himself. The fighting to stay positive, the inner battle, you know, unreflected on the outside watching beautiful explosions of the rocks kind of in slow-mo as he's bashing them to dust you know very zen part of him as well is back with teasel and that town you know uh both incarnations of it and its populace the hope version and the colorado version kind of fused into one like a bizarro world sort of you know um in, in, in actu actuality, or, or naturally, I should say, I was embraced, you know, embracing this hybrid universe, you know. Maybe the only question I had going in was, is this taking place in heaven, or is this taking place in hell? Multi-dimensional paradox, baby, you know, I'm in. So, the filmmakers found Cameron's Rambo to be a bit too crazy, and Morel not only fixes the problem, but he excels one higher by embracing his roots. And in turn, Rambo's presented here even more realistic than in, in, in both movies. You know, this is a guy who's not only completely realistic and in the moment, but also here's a guy you don't want to fuck with. Um, it sucks there was no Rambo 2008 novelization. Um... Seriously, um, it's, um, 
it's like it not only would have been a best-selling stay true masterpiece but they would have made a sea of cash but you know I, I go I guess it goes you know with that old Hollywood saying you know as they say in Hollywood bleeding that first onion is the hardest so to speak <laughs> um, yeah so that would have, you know could you imagine could you just imagine what a Rambo 4 novelization would have been like oh my god um, yeah so for very little money in comparison you know if it if, if, if there's one thing we've learned this long season is that you better not underestimate Rambo mania you know time has proven over again and again to underestimate this phenomenon is a big mistake you know many a time so just like just like you know the good old true Rambo soon enough Rambo's fighting himself over thoughts of Nam the VC commander Teasel's uh, nature and his own demeanor and suddenly a guard calls him over and he drinks and uh, ladles some water over himself on the way over to meet the guards and he starts thinking nervously about the group of guards in tents but shows nothing on the outside um, they bring him to his cell room and then Troutman shows up and the way he's described is much like how a father you know figure could be as well as how Rambo could have turned out if he trained students on his own um, very foreshadowing to Rambo 4 too you know this Troutman is beautiful 50 years of service half that time in the military trained to ruthlessly kill every with every weapon from an AK-47 to a ballpoint pen and he taught that well as well you know jungle mountain range desert expert in fighting on those terrains watched his pupils blasted apart their bloody leftovers pelting him you know he's he's been wounded twice you know um this this mission to recover Rambo in this re-recruit would be the hardest uh, the hardest thing he'd ever have to do you know entourage armed guards um, you know lead lead him down to Rambo you know one pulls a pistol and wants to ambush him so we can see that Rambo's kind of everyone's kind of worried about how to react around Rambo you know um, which they should be because, you know, history, right? You don't want to repeat that, you know. Um, yeah, so where was I? Yeah, they lead him um, to Rambo's holding cell. One pulls out a pistol and wants to ambush him, but Sam knows there's no need, you know. We get Cameron's fucking Prince of Darkness joke, which is amazing. Uh, Troutman blarts the man, you know, like like kids pretty much to to leave them alone in privacy you know because like one wants to jump Rambo they're pretty much used to like when they see Rambo Rambo's always ready for attack pretty much so you know they're just being fucking assholes anyway um so Rambo's like pretty hard to open up but he does eventually and it's like watching a caged panther you know the bonds are, are reestablished and Troutman is saddened by Rambo. Like the father-son plays out here great. And eventually, you know, Troutman finds a shoebox containing Rambo's belongings. Bunches of medals and photos of himself younger with old friends in the war. Uh, the Baker team. And Rambo smiling young, you know. And the question is asked to Rambo, what do you want? And the reply to be told you know he, Rambo says to be told I did a good job you know maybe a pat on the back just simply some recognition for what he had to sacrifice and then come home and be so mistreated for he was only doing what he thought was right and what people told him to do and then viciously scorned for it 
So Rambo's like really reluctant to take up the reenlistment request offer for freedom, you know. So Samuel brings him out to the um, to the lawn to talk to Murdoch, and Rambo's still in cuffs. And Murdoch, who messes with Rambo's head, you know, talk of you know talk of spooks and conspiracies. Uh, then the bomb drops to be sent back to hell. And Rambo, so reluctant, doesn't trust, you know. Then we get a flashback to Tay, VC commander from First Blood. Furious about settling the score, Rambo finally starts to get curious and agrees and brings, you know, the smoking Murdoch off his high horse as he uh, tosses the cuffs to the ground in Houdini fashion. Um, Murdoch in awe that Rambo's, you know, uh, freed himself from the handcuffs and their strengths because pretty much Rambo could have got out of that whole place anytime he wanted. Um, you know, and the appearances are everything, right? And so at this point, I don't think Rambo knows the particularness of, of um, himself where he's actually going. But I think he kind of gets the feel that he'll be back on the same turf in one form or another. And Murdoch's just standing there like flabbergasted, like really impressed, while Rambo just kind of loses himself to the Zen finally being outside. And he's looking down at the lawn sprinklers and, and, and the water going on the lawn, like the sprinklers going off. And it's a pretty, pretty nice scene because things kind of escalate from here. You know, because Rambo is pretty much invited to return to the element. And everything everybody gave him shit about in Hope, Washington, or back in Colorado, um, it was kind of like a freedom now. You know, like a freedom. Now he's looking at a presidential pardon. He's looking at a couple of things temporarily, uh, a temporary re-enlistment. And he's looking at, you know... From, from where we saw Rambo last time where he didn't want to take a life well he almost did but you know and that one other engulfed in self defense but now we're getting um, into the crux of now they're giving Rambo permission to go Rambo in a sense because they have to know that even if they just assume he's going for photographs he's not going to listen he's fucking Rambo right and the thing I like about it is Morel lets you decide which universe you want to be in. He lets you decide if you want to be on the side of Rambo not killing anyone in the first one. In the movie, he lets you be on the side of his interpretation of Rambo. Um, out there in the original 1972 version, where Rambo is just decimating everything. And thus, uh, with this, he easily gives you a place to be. Where you can embrace both worlds simultaneously at the same time. You know, so it's it's a really cool paradox. It's a really cool and, you know, something that definitely wasn't done before this. So this is very cool. This is very cool. Okay, let's let's move on here. Like harboring on from it, um the presentation of this is just dreamlike. You know, you're going in thinking one thing, but you're going to come out with a whole new look, not only on this movie, but on everything related to Rambo at that time and the phenomenon and what would become Force of Freedom animated show. Everything, you know, your your whole mindset will shift after reading um, First Blood Part 2. And when you eventually get on to Rambo 3, reading that novelization, man, that one just shoots you through the loop even further. Like, that one is almost completely different than the movie. And it's, like, a million times better than Rambo 3. I'm a big Rambo 3 fan, but that book kicks that movie's ass. 